And so for those of us who are schooling, it used to be the norm, but now things have changed. You can be, you can have a certificate in Agric and you'll be working in a bank. Yeah. Why? Because our first degrees, we are taught to learn, to upgrade ourselves so that we have that particular level of intellect yeah. to be able to handle every situation. Please, those of us here, don't, don't bother so much about the course you are reading for a first degree. If only you have interest in the subject. That is the most important thing. Once you are done, just focus, pray to God, and work hard, and you get to where you want to get to. It's very important. That's one thing uh, that Oskage has hit, and I want us to retreat on it. Please, whatever you are doing, the most important thing is that you also have a degree or any other diploma. You come out, the rest depends on you. Let me add before he comes in. The certificates you guys are looking for and you are working for, they are not ends, but they are means to what? An, an end. end. Your current course, you're, you are schooling because you want to have a certificate and have a what? A profession. And so most of us who have made it that, oh, it happened just recently, uh, some years back, when I, I had a lady who came to my office. You know, for investment bank, you have a lot of this KNUSC and students coming to open account. And so he was just completing. He was writing his, her thesis. And so I asked her, after first degree, where do you want to work? You know what she said? I want to do my master's. I said, what? Which industry is master's degree? Master's degree is not a job. Yeah. Master's degree is not a job. We are not saying do not pursue academic excellence. You can have your PhD, but you are schooling so that you become a professional. When you finish with your first degree, find a job to do. Those of us, I'll be, uh, tomorrow I'll come in, I'll, I'll take the very first 30 minutes to teach you about finance and investment and all this, how you can prepare to start something on your own. Mrs. Kakari's wife has her own company. Yeah. She is producing juice, and now she doesn't need to take her CV to anybody to be picked to come and work for that person. If you work for someone, you are helping that person to achieve his or her dreams. If you work for yourself, you are working to achieve your what? your dreams, who, who, who interspace it with entrepreneurship, how to start something. There are a lot of you, when you complete school, instead of you taking your CVs to company by company to find jobs, you can start something little. There's a way to find some little, little finances to set yourselves up. You can start something so that you become entrepreneur. The church needs people who have their own jobs. The Adventist church, I'm saying it again. Yeah. The Adventist church, now if I have a staff, ah, will my staff think about one day going to church on Sabbath? No. No. Friday, 3.30, yeah, I start please. telling my staff, you can go home. You can go home. And they know that for us, after three, you can start packing. Four, you can be at home, start preparing for the Sabbath because my boss is... An Adventist, a staunch Adventist, not just an ordinary Adventist. <laughs> a staunch Adventist. And I want it to be practiced. So that Sabbath, you can, you can fold your arms and sit in church and listen to the sermon. Not thinking that I'll be called to come and work. If you have about thousands of Adventist entrepreneurs who are employing Adventists, the church will be fine. We will never have this problem of going to church or going to work on the Sabbath. So we need a lot of you, and we are lacking behind. Adventists, we are lacking behind. I'm saying it once again. If we don't know, we are lacking behind. I remember when we were young, we had only two people who were attending universities. Yeah. Only the whole of Kumasi knew Tafu. We had uh, uh, Bra and uh, Mr. Uh, Dr. Chidakon and uh, uh, um, Mr. Osei, uh, what's the name of Osei? Kingsley. But now, God being so good, we have a lot of you in the universities, in the polytechnics, and we hope that you complete and come to hold this church, you put this church on your laps, so that now in our church, we can have a lot of finances to find, a lot of funds to finance evangelisms.
Now, when we need people, ah, wouldn't it have been so nice that we we'll take all Adventist students to Saint Chi? Yeah. Then this year's NAS Congress will hold it in Saint Chi. You go and sleep in fine rooms, you eat good, mm-hmm. and you listen to good sermons. That one Adventist or three Adventists will come together and say that we'll we will finance it. This. We are sponsoring it. No one is paying NAS Congress fees. It will come to pass. Amen. Amen. Trust me. It will come. It will surely come to pass. But you and I have to work very hard. Start something on your own. We'll, we'll be taking you through some of these things. God bless us. Amen. 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 So our, our generation uh, with Mr. Boache, Mr. Yad, our generation want to change things. The church has a burden. Not only in Ghana, but the whole Africa. We have a huge burden. Unemployment rate in our church is climbing higher. But you and I have to curtail it. If we think differently, if we aspire differently, if we do things differently, our church will change. We don't need to be eating from takeaway plates, you know. You know, we have to go beyond it. Gradually, but you say in this canal, when you talk, it should be backed by money. And we know gradually we are going to get there. So stay motivated, discipline yourself, and I tell you that the sky will be our limit. God will help us. That is key. For us to rise higher in our educational pursuits. God willing tomorrow will continue as we end the as we end our seminar track tomorrow. If you have any question, I'll pause here, then you can ask your question as you wrap up.